Yo, what's up? This is Concept from Unlock Your Style, and we are here. The end of phase one. Phase 1.7, all right? We're all sitting down here because this last point in the phase, um, I want to talk about clarity, right? Um, we're not really going to dance today, but I want to tell you about something mentally you could think about when you're dancing through all the parts in phase one, right? So 1.7, again, like I said, is clarity. Clarity is something you need in dance, right? It's something you need in life, actually. It's, it's the destination of where you're going to go. If you don't know your destination, you pretty much are just walking around in one spot, right? In circles. So you need to figure out what your destination is with dance, whether it is what dance style you want, what move you want to do, what kind of movement you want to do, um, where you want to go and dance everything you got to know exactly what you want so you can go towards that once you find out your what your outcome is and you have clarity on that outcome you literally only have to make decisions that benefit to that outcome from this point forward right all your decisions go towards that outcome and that's what your clarity can give you okay um, parts one through six on phase one already can act as points of clarity right each part can be an outcome Focus on one, do everything it takes to get to that one outcome, right? Um, nobody said you can't have multiple <coughs> outcomes, but you really wanna focus in on and hone in on an outcome at a time, right? Um, so we're all sitting down here on the steps um, on this hot day, and we're just gonna talk about a little bit about clarity, right? And I want to open it up to everyone here because I feel like you guys should hear these guys' voices more. Um, but for me, my experiences with clarity is um, finding kind of my self-confidence and self-love to be able to choose any outcome I want. And me being like kind of a perfectionist, I learned to let that go and just go towards the outcome. As long as I'm towards the outcome, towards the outcome, I'm good. Right, whether it be fixed points, footwork, musicality, textures, whether it be any of that, I'm fixed on that and I get there, right? Um, so yeah, I kind of wanted to open up to you guys on what your thoughts on clarity, um, what your thoughts on your destinations right now as far as in dance. Um, and we can open it up to where it's like, you know, just kind of briefly go over right now, what is your outcome, right? Whether it be a small outcome or big outcome, so floor is open anybody can go and then we'll just continue this conversation I guess going off of what you just said uh, I'm reflecting on like my own path that I've like gone through in dance and like regarding clarity um, just based off of like what was influencing me when I first started dancing um, like uh, a lot of the people that you know I looked up to, I would ask them for advice and they tell me, oh, you gotta be clean, like cleanliness, that's like, you know, how you'll be a good dancer. And then so like, I realized that was like the outcome that I would always like, like be going for it. So then like when I would think, oh, I'm gonna practice my dance, like I'm gonna drill this thing like hella times. So it looks hella good, right? But then uh, once like I started like, like freestyling more and just being more around freestylers, like, uh, I noticed that like because like my outcome that I had been going for was just like oh to like look good like I had a hard time like letting go and actually just like dancing dancing um, so I, I'd say like now like because I, I have that like that perspective like oh, okay so like that's because like that's like what was in my head that's what like you know why my dancing like kind of is what it is and so I would say for my outcome now I'm trying to find um, like that place where I can kind of just like have fun with it more instead of just thinking like oh like if my line isn't perfect like I suck you know um yeah so then I would say like I'm, I'm trying to find the clarity in um I guess just letting go if that makes sense yeah yeah but that's me, that's my two cents. And that kind of goes along with like something I also will teach with clarity where um, a common a common thing that dancers do is they get, they think they have clarity in an outcome with a very vague uh, subject, right? So for example, if you say, I just want to be clean, right? 
super vague, right? It's if you think about it down to the specifics, it's not as clear as you think. If you just say I need to be clean, because now you're finding yourself to be clean, but what are you cleaning now? You know what I mean? Like you you have to really pinpoint your outcomes to okay, cleanliness, right? Now cleanliness and what? What do I need to be clean in? What am I not clean in? What do I need to fix? Right? Letting go. What's stopping me from letting go? What is letting go? What's that feeling for me? It taps into emotional creativity versus visual creativity. And that's a perfect segue to where you have emotional creativity or you lack emotional cre- uh, clarity. You lack emotional clarity. So now the technical stuff and the visual stuff is out and you have to um, tap in basically is the, is the words I like to say and let go to that emotional clarity. And um, for the guys at home or the girls at home and for everyone at home, Emotional clarity versus visual clarity. Emotional clarity, um, I like to compare it to, um, what's his name? Evil Knievel. The guy who jumps. Tony Jump. Oh, the guy who jumps. Evil Knievel. So, emotional clarity, I like to compare it to Evil Knievel, right? No matter how much scientific measurements he has, with the, how far the jump is, how fast he has to go, if he's not in full sand mode and that doesn't have that emotional clarity of getting to the other side, He's, it's gonna be a hard time. He's not gonna be able to do it, right? Uh, visual clarity is very on point visual. I know exactly where my arm goes, where this goes, like if there's choreography, if there's not. Um, very Jackie Chan type things where he pinpoints everything in a scene and on a beat on all the rhythm to make sure the visual is clear, right? So, perfect, that was a perfect segue into that because you say your outcome right now is letting go, right? Letting go can mean a lot of things to different people, right? Now you have to pinpoint, what is letting go to you? What's that clarity within letting go? You know what I mean? That inside that root will will give you your pure outcome, right? And then you can even go deeper than that and be like, okay, what's causing me not to let go? What's scarred me to not let go, right? What's giving me that weird feeling to not fully go all the way through with what I want to do? Right, and you start questioning yourself, and that's good, right? So that clarity, you wanna get specific with it, you wanna get your outcomes right. Um, And you just wanna make sure that everything is honestly clear in front of you of of what your destination is, right? So does anybody else have like, know what their outcome is, or you know, if they have clarity, if they wanna speak on emotional and visual visual clarity? and again, this is kind of like a conversation to you guys. Um, so feel free to like pause, rewind, uh, comment down below for questions if, you know, we're going everywhere. But um, we're kind of, it's kind of like, you know, podcast mode. We're just going to have a conversation about this, you know. Phase 1.7. Mm-hmm. I, think I, I think I'm the opposite. I'm, I feel like I'm naturally more uh, emotional clarity. Like, um, it's like naturally, like when back, I think back to like high school, I used to do more contemporary in like my high school dance comedy. So we'd have a lot of like just improv sessions where we're guided to trust more emotion. Type. And that kind of led me to like being more, a little more just emotional in my dancing. Mm-hmm. But I think I've always been attracted to visual. So I, I'm constantly like looking for that clarity of like, this feels good in my body. So I'm trusting that it feels good, and then I'll watch it and I'm like, ah, but visually it's not as clear. So I think it's like been very slow, but I think that's usually when I'm trying to find that balance of like training more, like get my visual clarity um, like clear and all that, but making it feel good too as, as I do it. Right, and that's yeah. that's exactly like, okay, so for example, that's another good one the perfect balance between emotional clarity and visual clarity to where um, you might feel good while doing something, you might feel really good while dancing and you feel like everyone's feeling you, right? But you can only translate so much to somebody else because your emotional clarity is gonna be your own. So if I try to project my emotional clarity on Leroy, or Matt, or Ed, or Kevin, it might not translate to them because they never had my experiences. Mm-hmm. 
But when you have visual clarity, you can actually connect those two, bring them together to where I can show you exactly what's in my head, what I'm going through, by visually interpreting it to you. Does that make sense? And that's that perfect balance to where it's like, okay, I know I can reverse engineer certain body languages, certain feelings, certain body positions I'm in, and certain feelings that are kind of general and vague to the world, human nature. And when you can translate that to a, another person, essentially you're bringing them into your world, and it creates that whole big thing of visual cr uh, clarity and emotional clarity. And people would just feel you, they understand you, but also they're like, yo, that shit was dope as fuck, mm -hmm. right? So, oh, that shit was dope. So it's like, I like to compare it to battling and then watching it on YouTube later, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the emotional clarity comes out when you're in the battle. Mm -hmm. The visual clarity comes out when you watch it on YouTube, yeah. <laughs> right? So. Sometimes you'll think like, why did that person win in the battle? Why did I win that battle? Or why did, why did I lose that battle? I was fucking going in. Or I was going in. And you watch it over and you say, okay, visually, I didn't really see what you were doing. If you were there in the moment, yeah, everyone felt it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you could literally watch the video and be like, yeah, I lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I see. Mm -hmm. Right? So now the goal is as a dancer is to connect those two. And you become this true self and now you're projecting your your honest self to somebody else visually emotionally everything's connected right and once you get that you get award-winning actors you get oscar-winning actors you get people yeah. like keith ledger people like uh joaquin phoenix you get people like will smith where they can visually interpret something to make it seem relatable and then throw at you this emotional clarity that's like, oh shit, mm -hmm. damn, you just got relatable and I feel what you're saying. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As dancers, if we can do that, thousands of people in, in a room watching you, if you could do that and connect that to one person, you're doing your job, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, 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 kind of, um, it's kind of like a win-win situation. You feel good about it, this other person feels good about it. Mm -hmm. You're giving it and you're also receiving it. So it's like, that's true fucking like that's true self-love and true giving right there you know what yeah. i'm saying um anybody else have like any outcomes or like some clarity that they want to talk about or anything mm -hmm. okay. um, um i think for me is i'm more visual clarity because in the beginning i first started dancing it was a good cop out mm. because i like if you if you look clean you don't really have to if your technique is good you know you can get you can get past that and not having to focus on the emotion parts but if you want to be a better dancer you need a mix of emotional visual clarity and for the longest time i ignored it and not because i i didn't well i didn't want to tap in my emotional clarity because for me it's more of like you didn't have emotional clarity but yeah well that and who i am as a person mm. i don't have my emotions period ah so for me the reason i'm not an emotional dancer is because in a way honestly i was afraid to tap into that because as a person who i am in life i don't tap into my emotions and i'm very um high functioning if i'm sad mad whatever i go about normally you can't tell so for me it's more it was an easy way to breeze through everything and uh, yeah I was able to just ignore all of that but the reason I don't have emotional clarity is I don't for the longest I didn't want to tap into that because I was afraid of the outcome I was afraid of what would happen if I would tap into it not necessarily like how I would act but I just I didn't want to face my fears right. of my emotions that's, and that's yeah. yeah, and that's where my emotional clarity comes in because um, I, I realized that's why for a while I wanted to learn different styles, not for the movement. I didn't want to learn b-boy or crump or whatever it was because I thought it looked cool. But if you look at the best dancers in those styles, look at the personalities. Look at who they are as people outside of dance. Like when they're just chilling in a room. 
they're confident in who they are as people. They're genuine with themselves and they're genuine with others. I wanted that. I didn't want the style. I didn't want the movement. I wanted the personality and the confidence that comes with it to help me out. Dang. So I wanted that because technique, I can have clean waves. I can have all this for days, but I'm not doing anything with it. Dang. So for me, it was more I wanted that emotional clarity and I lost it during COVID and everything, but I'm like slowly gaining it back. But I'm realized, I realized a while back, like a year or two ago, in order for me to gain that, I needed to be confident with who I was as a person. Right. Am I happy with who I am as a person? Am I happy with where I am in life? For me, that's where my clarity as a dancer came from. Right. Or is coming from. I'm working on self-confidence and self-love with myself as an individual yeah like before dance before anything i'm learning to love myself be confident of who i am as a person once i get that i know for a fact my emotional clarity with the visual is going to go off the charts and also you guys are making valid points like the one enemy of clarity is fear clouds all clarity fear is the one thing that clouds all, all clarity i learned this from one of my biggest mentors in life um, and he would always constantly tell me um, love over fear and um, fear when it clouds your clarity you start doubting yourself you start just becoming just insecure mm -hmm. not confident the whole thing um, so now you gotta ask yourself if there's fear of gaining that emotional clarity because of tapping into that but at the same, on the other hand, you have frustration on moving forward with dance, mm -hmm. right? So now you got to think, if this one thing is preventing me from moving forward in dance, to me, moving forward in dance outweighs your fear a yeah. hundred times out of a hundred times. Fear is the one right. thing that so, clouds your clarity, okay? Um, and then you have to ask yourself, is, does it, uh, what was I saying? You gotta ask yourself, if that one thing of gaining emotional clarity can move you forward in dance, to me, that alone overpowers the fear of getting it, right? Because if your one outcome is, I need to get here, and the only thing blocking you is this, and it's just fear in the way, to me, it's just like really, like that's mental now. That's like all in your all in your mentality. Mm -hmm. So you can literally get to this. You can literally jump ten steps forward by getting over this. You have to learn to love yourself to get past that fear to gain that emotional clarity, right? Um, and that'll probably like you dancing with emotional clarity would probably up your shit, fucking. Oh, I know for a crazy. I know yeah. for a fact. Crazy. Honestly, to be cocky, when I get that emotional clarity. My dance is gonna go up so much. I know for a fact. <laughs> right. It's gonna increase. Um, and then you brought up a good point when the, when the camera turned off. Uh, yeah, I, I just think that uh, Kevin's point about knowing who he is as a person and tying that into dance was a really good point because just the other day we were talking about um, just how dancers, we're not solely dancers, and Paul brings, brings this up a lot that, you know, we're people first but we dance and it reflects who we are into our dance and I think people kind of forget that sometimes like we try to be someone else or not when we dance just to try to impress people or whatever but like Kevin knowing himself that's who he dances that's how he dances because that's who he is and I think that's a really good point that um, a lot of dancers and people in general need to strive to understand like who we are as a person is like the ultimate goal yeah it's like fighting yourself you know mm -hmm. and it's like have you heard that theory about Pokemon <laughs> so there's a theory about Pokemon <laughs> and this is rambling but you guys will love this so this is theory about Pokemon that on the first episode <laughs> do you remember when he got struck by lightning mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so the episode the, the theory is when he got struck by lightning he is in a coma and for the rest of the whole show he's dreaming of the whole Pokemon show. 
Mm. You know, I, I, read, I read that somewhere, but where it wasn't lightning, but it was when he found Ho-Ho and he made a wish. Oh, okay. it was that's what, that's what I heard, but it's okay. like, it sounds similar. Yeah, so he got hit by the lightning. So Ash got hit by the lightning. And, and I'm going to do this real quick. And he was in a coma for the whole Pokemon show. And you realize the whole first 150 of Pokemon are based on animals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. After the first 150, they start becoming weirder and weirder and weirder and less animal-like, mm -hmm. right? So that means his, it, was, it was saying that his brain was deteriorating and he's losing reference to continue the dreams more, to, to keep continuing the dreams. He's losing real-world references, mm -hmm. right? And so to wrap back around to what you guys were saying, if... <laughs> If you don't realize your dance projects from your life, you slowly start to lose reference to what you need to do. So when you start becoming a 100% dancer, imagine reverencing dance with past dance. It's just gonna slowly lose its genuine root of who you are. And after a while of stacking on that, stacking on that, stacking on that, you become this general dancer that only knows dance because there's no life reference. Mm. And it's hard to translate what you've, what you've gone through because you're only referencing the dance you've gone through before then. Mm. So you gotta realize that a good clarity is knowing that we're humans, we're people first. Life experiences, it, 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 it contributes to your dance. No matter what you say, no matter how many classes you take, if you live, think, and breathe, only dance and forget that you have a normal life, you will lose that life reference within your dance and it'll slowly waste away and you start having shit like Typhloza, Typhlo Typhlosion. Typhlosion. You'll start having Typhlosions <laughs> and then you'll start having, uh, uh, what's a weird one? The, the sword one. Yeah, you'll start having weird things because <laughs> Because in Pokemon, they probably literally run out of animal references. No, they have one that's a garbage bag and one that's ice cream. Right, they start yeah. going into item <laughs> references and stuff like that. So it's like, you don't want to lose that. You don't want to lose that. You want to add to your life experience, include it in your dance, and realize you're a person first and dance accordingly. He said he wants to gain that personality that a lot of dancers have, right? A lot of dope dancers aren't dope dancers and then gain personality. What Kevin has to realize is that he already has a dope yeah. personality, but he has to translate it into dance. <laughs> so it doesn't go the other way. It doesn't go, I need to dance dope to be that confident. It's, I need to be confident to dance dope. Yeah, a lot dude. of the dopest dancers yeah. I know is that they'll walk in a room and it's all eyes on that person. Shoot, yeah, yeah. who's that? Is he famous? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it could be anybody. I think it's more uh, like you <laughs> said. I have to be com I have to be confident with myself, and just be confident that be confident in who I am as a person. Yeah, that's all it is really. And it's like I know a lot of people hate it when you tell them just be confident in yourself because it's harder to actually do it. But it's mainly because it's not hard being confident. It's hard the process to get confident. People don't want to do the work. Mm. That's all it is. They're lazy about it. They don't want to do the work and getting that confidence. And it's also a frustrating circle. Yeah. Because, for example, the other day, I told Damien, the cameraman, D. Tizzle, that if he had the <laughs> same confidence in front of the camera, or even dancing, or freestyling, if he had the same confidence he had if he was playing Call of Duty, <laughs> he would be going in. Yeah. Because okay. Damien playing Call of Duty is just like confident. He'll talk smack. He'll be like, hey, no, you guys go here. Da, 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 da. <laughs> He'll lead, right? But then... All of a sudden, if it's a chance to lead in somewhere else outside of Call of Duty, it's like uh, stutter mode. I don't know what to do. So it's like, obviously that person is there. But what happens in that? What gets lost in translation when it comes to that, right? Mm -hmm. And it comes down to that frustrating circle of, I don't think I'm good at this. I know I'm good at this, so I'm going to be confident in this. But I don't know if I'm good at this yet, so I can't really be confident with it. I, that person is there. And I have to apply it to real life situations. You know what I'm saying? Um, and and to kind of start wrapping things up a little bit, clarity. And I hope you guys are following. 
Um, clarity is a big thing in dance. And I like to use this as my last part of phase one because coming into phase two to five, you're gonna need clarity because we're gonna go over concepts, we're gonna go over character situational training, we're gonna go over battle tactics and cipher etiquette, we're gonna go over application of everything. You're gonna need that clarity of each phase to move forward, right? To essentially unlock your style. Um, if you are signed up for the Patreon, um, this conversation is gonna go a little deeper. I have a little more things to say. Um, so make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe monthly to our Patreon. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube. Comment below. There's a lot of people who's been showing us love of of, of what we've been, uh, with what we've been putting out. So if um, you're new to this channel, please subscribe uh, for more content. If you don't like it, don't subscribe. That is totally up to you. Um, really, uh, just just tune in and and see what we will give you. Um, but yeah. Patreon. We're gonna get, we're gonna talk more deeper into this conversation. Uh, this is the Unlock team, by the way. If you guys don't know, you guys always see them in the back doing shit. Um, that's Leroy. That's Ed. That's Matt. That's Kevin. And I'm Concept. <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> and I'm Concept, right? So yeah, Unlock Your Style. There's a lot of big things going on. Um, please like, share, subscribe, comment, notification bell, the whole thing that everybody says I need you to do because only 80% of you that are watching, because 80% of you that are watching are not subscribed. <laughs> and that could be an issue. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. Cool. Recruit um, does that. YouTubers do that. Cool. It's so, so yeah, thank yeah. you for watching Unlock Your Style. I hope you like the last part of phase one, and that's clarity. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you didn't make it to this point of the conversation, you're not hearing what I'm saying right now. But if you did, <laughs> tell the people who didn't, tell your friends, let them know that this whole conversation is really helpful to your head, your mentality, and dance, your clarity, and everything. Cool? Peace!